What is going on ladies and gentlemen? We are back again with another 90 day fiance video and this one is all about Amber and Daniel. But before we get into it, let's start off by giving a big massive shout out to every single person that is a member of the channel, every single person that is a member of Patreon where I have just dropped episode two of season one of 90 day fiance UK. So if you want to check it out, link is down below and trust me when I tell you, episode was something else. But also at the same time, let's give a big massive shout out to every single person that is a member, no, that is a subscriber as we continue to grow. Now, with that being said, I rewatched the scene of this week's or last week's episode, should I say, of Love in Paradise. And I was able to identify eight, eight, eight reasons why their relationship is already kaput and why Daniel has to run and go back home. But there is a chance that maybe I might pick up two more throughout the video. You never know. But anyway, let's get into it. It's kimono nice. I know, girls nice. Cheers. Because <laughs> we're fabulous. My friend Ashton has been living with us for a week now, and although Daniel's not happy. <sighs> no, no, no. <laughs> after being at work all day and having to come home to just Daniel, he's usually miserable. So I do like having Ashton here so I can... <laughs> and that there is reason number one. Identifying the fact that when she comes home, she doesn't even want to spend, spend time with her husband. She wants to spend time with a friend because her husband is miserable. But the biggest problem is, is that she's unable to identify why he's miserable. But hey, let's continue. Hmm. Laugh and just let loose. <laughs> <laughs> I can do a handstand, I can do a handstand. I can do a handstand. I can do a handstand. And you know this is going to happen? Yep. Right now, my wife is out there with her friend. I'm here in the room alone. And I would like you over here with me. And that right there is reason number two. The fact that he's in his own, he, the fact that he's in the room alone and she'd rather be spending time with her friend rather than going in the room with her partner and actually having a good time or having a conversation or doing something that married couples are supposed to do. But instead of doing that, She's staying there, and this is another reason why Daniel should run, because he's being left, he's, he's basically being abandoned. He's basically in a country where he has no friends, he's, a, he's unable to mingle. While well, saying that though, later on in the episode, we do see him go out to play baseball for the first time with a, a bunch of people, but the grand scheme of it is that he's in this place where she's meant to be making him comfortable, but she does nothing but the opposite. Anyway, let's continue. Reason number two right there, ladies and gentlemen. It's not with me, I don't know, doing something, but she's not, she's just... Out there getting drunk. We need a pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can swim around and be drinking in the pool. In the pool. Because right now I wish we could. I'm so frustrated and disappointed. I want to say something, but the last time I said something about the house, Amber defends Ashton instead of me. I just. There, right there, right there. Reason number three why he should run was the last time he tried to actually have a conversation with his woman about obviously Ashton and anything else. What did she do? She decided to defend Ashton rather than defend her partner. And why did she defend her, defend, defend Ashton? Oh yeah, because he pays bills and Daniel doesn't, even though that she knows that Daniel can't because he can't actually get a job until he gets his, exactly. But nonetheless though, let's continue. I just want my wife to consider my feelings. That's all I want. How about like we make a little cat parade? Yeah. Cat parade. Cat parade. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy! Calvin! Gente, si está loca, ahora gritando ahí como loco. Cat parade, come here. Papi! Papi chulo! Meow, meow. Hello, man. This situation made me miss my life in Costa Rica. So I call my brother David because he's my best friend. Como tu, tu Reason number four, he's now missing home. And the, 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 the saddest thing is that he's not necessarily just missing home because it's home, but he's missing home because he's in a position where he's forced to miss his home. So this is another reason why he should run because he needs to remind himself that he's got options, which is something that does get obviously spoken about to a certain degree within this episode anyway, or this scene anyway with his brother. And his brother does say to him, you could always come back home if you want to. So this is another reason why he should run because he's always got the option to go back to Costa Rica if he would like to, if you dig what I'm saying. But hey, let's uh, get into it. David and I live together in Costa Rica and leave him behind to come to Florida. It was really hard. I really miss him a lot. 
Reason number five, and this one is one I actually didn't pick up the first time. He's left Costa Rica. He's left his lifestyle. He's left his brother. He's left his family, everybody that he loves, his best friend, to come to the States to live with a woman that was supposed to be his wife, which she is, of course, on paper, but was supposed to actually have a relationship like a married couple. But instead of doing that, she'd rather be toxic, be unnecessary, and that's the grand scheme of it. So that's another reason why he should run. And that's reason number five. And that's an added one right there because I didn't catch that one at the first time. But nonetheless, though, let's continue. Mira, ¿y cuándo crees tú que yo pueda ir a Estados Unidos? Ah, no, hasta que no tenga permiso de trabajo, no puedo hacer nada por el momento, no puedo producir. I always want to bring my brother here to the United States, uh, but I have to sponsor a visa. And for that, I need a green card, and I don't even have my work permit yet. So it's... Marico, ahorita estoy molesto porque ya me está en la cocina borracha con, con el nuevo inquilino. A mí yo no quiero que te traigan no, gente loca aquí en la casa, pero Cambe dice que no tengo nada que decir porque no puedo correr. Estoy un poco preocupado de que no vaya a estar feliz aquí, ¿sí me entiendes? Todo este tiempo, o sea, ¿qué has pensado en eso? ¿No has pensado en regresarte a Costa Rica? Yo que sí, pero vamos a ver. Ok, cualquier cosa que necesite. Si necesitas algo, me llama. O sea, aquí también estamos para ti. Bueno, chao, hermano. Chao, hermano. I love Ember, but I'll let you put me fears in our relationship. I think we just gonna keep growing for a part. Reason number six, the fact that he does love her, but of course her attitude is making them grow far apart. There's no point in sticking around for someone that is making you feel like no matter what you do, no matter what happens, all you're gonna keep, all you're gonna continue doing is growing apart. That's reason number six right there. But anyway, huh, let's continue. What's all these with? Yours? You did not shut the tree bag and it fell out the cupboard. I'm a Reason number seven. He walks in and straight away she wants to blame him for something that he didn't even do enough. He didn't even do anything wrong for. And the, the worst part is she wasn't even joking. She's been deadly serious. Sad as hell. <laughs> Putting the blame on him just because he asked the question about it, of why is there mess on the floor? Like, this is just flat out bullying at this stage. Bullying right there. Reason number seven, ladies and gentlemen. Let's continue. Mm hmm. Ah, man, life. Let's go to the room. I don't want to. At least go to talk to me. Are you hooked up? Amber. Just, let's go to the room. Reason number eight. When Hubby has asked her, listen, let's go to the other room. Let's have a discussion. Refusing. And then when she does go to do it, she's like, her body language is, is just basically rude. The body language is disgusting. How can you make your partner feel like you can't stand him? All he's asking for is to go in another room so you can have a conversation privately. Simple as that, but no. She's got to make a whole hissy fit about it. Sad as hell, but hey, sometimes... <clears throat> this is the thing I was worried about. Because now you're dead, like, you're not f***ing, you're feeling like... Yeah, fine, please. Is that we what have you want? in Costa Rica, what changed? You change. I don't know who I am anymore. I don't know my identity. I don't know where I'm heading. Like, I am, I feel lost. You feel lost? What do you think? You're getting drugs when I... For two seconds, I'm allowed to forget, Daniel. To forget. Reason number nine. Choosing to have... An, a, a, choosing to drink, be messy with your friends, rather than actually have a conversation with your partner. Rather than actually vent to your partner that life right now is stressful. Can you please be there for me however you can be? Whether that be a cuddle, whether that be tidying up the house, whether that be doing other things, I don't know. Whatever he can do within his means, I'm sure he's more than happy to do it. But she's not even considering that conversation. She'd rather avoid the conversation and just act like a complete fool and then at the same time disrespect him. Another reason why he should just run because her attitude is saying that, you know what? I can't even bother to even face the problems that we have at hand right now. I'd rather just get drunk with my friends and basically just ignore the hell out of you because pfft, I can, which she can't. But because she pays the bills, she feels that she can. Run away from responsibilities. Run away from accountability. Right there is another reason why Daniel should just run from Amber because clearly being an adult is something that hmm, she doesn't seem to want to do. Forget what? Forget this hot mess. This is a hot mess. Do you know how hard this is? You're not working full time. You're not the driver for everything. You're not the mother. You're not the teacher. You're not the translator. You're not the secretary. You're not making sure we lose all of our money. I'm a you knew it. This is a No, no one you told me it. this. No it. one told me this. Whoa, you Nobody told me this, Daniel. Nobody told me this. So give me a break. No, you give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. Please give me a break. I'm a 
remember, if this keep happening, we, you and me, we won't be to much longer together if this keep happening. And then reason number 10. I knew there was 10 reasons. Finally found the last one anyway. And then reason number two, to be fair, this one I knew before the video, but nonetheless though, reason number 10, refusing to just be civil. Always having to be explosive, never wanting to take the calm approach, never really wanting to take the approach that is correct to make sure that she can walk away from the conversation feeling a little bit better. She would rather shout and scream and walk away from the situation feeling even worse than before. The matter of the fact is that Amber is re refusing to um, acknowledge what is happening and she'd rather run away from it. And to make it worse, she'd rather just put herself in a position where she's going to continue giving herself more headaches. She's going to continue to keep drinking, continue to keep acting a fool because she doesn't want to be mature enough for herself. This is nothing to do with the, with the relationship at this point. This is for herself to save her own sanity. She'd rather keep going down the path of ignoring everything that has given her a hard time. And by doing that, she therefore puts all the pressure, not all the pressure, but then she therefore uses Daniel as, as the punching bag, which is the final reason to why he should run because she's using him as the punching bag. But as far as I'm concerned, from what I've seen so far this season, he's only tried to have conversations with her, but she has refused. And, now, and more proof to say that she's refused to have conversations. For example, before Ashton moved in, Ashton asked, asked um, Amber, did you have a conversation with Daniel about me moving in? She said, no, I'm not, no I haven't had that conversation. And every step of the way she's been asked, have you had a conversation with him about this? No, I haven't had it. And why? Because, well, I pay the bills, so he doesn't, so he doesn't have a say. No, it's not because you pay the bills, as I say, it's because you just don't want to have a conversation. Because you're not trying to look out for the best of your actual or mental health. You're just trying to drive yourself down that road of insanity. At the end of the day, despite the fact that you knew this was going to happen, and despite the fact that Daniel knew this was going to happen, it doesn't mean that you can't have a conversation because at the end of the day, life is a walking contradiction. Sometimes we say certain things, but then new things pop up and then we've got to change our mind. At the end of the day, when she when, when she met, met him in Costa Rica and they got married and all that kind of stuff, of course, they had a, she, she, she had a certain plan to buy a house, which she did, which ended up being a house that was obviously too expensive. But within that situation, okay, cool. What can we do different? How can we make this work in some way, somehow, so you can you know, find a way for me to be less stressful. And maybe if they then had conversations about potential friends coming in, maybe they wouldn't be in this situation. But rather than have conversations, she'd rather just bring things bring things on and just expect Daniel to just adapt because he doesn't work. But the question is this though, when Daniel finally does work and he is actually putting money on the table, does that mean that her attitude is going to change? Does that mean that her behavior is going to change? Does that mean that she's going to be in a happier place? I can tell you this now. Absolutely, it does not mean that in any kind of way because at the end of the day, even once he gets a job, there will be new reasons to complain because some people just love to complain. And I'm pretty sure once he starts working, she'll probably start complaining that he doesn't see her enough. Meanwhile, right now, she's avoiding seeing him. Nonetheless, though, we can add that right there. The summary has reason number 11, if you ask me. <laughs> but you guys let me know what you're thinking in the comment section and we'll talk about it. Like, subscribe, and peace.